Well, it isn't science fiction anymore. The U.S. Air Force has now officially unveiled both of the world's first ever AI-piloted fighter jets, the Andro YFQ-44 and the General Atomics YFQ-42. So let's take a good look and briefly run through what we know about these groundbreaking fighter drones in this abbreviated episode. But since I know people don't like it when I skip the intro, I'm Alex Hollings. And this is Air Power. About eight years ago now, someone tried to burn our house down, and I still don't know who did it. I assume they didn't like my coverage of something, but all I really know is that I was lucky to be awake to see their flashlight pass by our window. By the time I got outside, they were gone, and all that was left was a flaming gas can pushed up against the corner of our little house in the woods. Now, obviously, my family and I moved out of there, and I don't think a week goes by that I don't think about what could have happened that night if I hadn't been up, which is exactly why I was so excited to work with Incogni as a sponsor. You see, data brokers make it their business to collect all the personally identifiable information they can about you because... Well, they know there's a market for it. And let me assure you, they don't care if their buyer is looking for new customers or new victims. They'll sell off your data to other companies or worse, list it on websites for anyone to access for a small one-time fee. And if you've ever gotten a spam call, well, you probably are already the victim of a data broker. And if you're a parent, well, you probably already know that there's good reason to want to keep your home address and its occupants from being sold to bad actors. So if you're looking to get your personal information off the internet and out of the data broker's hands, Incogni can help. In fact, all you have to do is follow three simple steps. Make an account, grant Incogni permission to work on your behalf, and watch them go. And they don't just work once. They regularly conduct additional searches to reach out and have your data removed anytime it shows up on a broker's website. And thanks to Incogni, you can have that peace of mind of making your data safer for a real bargain. Just go to incogni.com slash sandbox with two X's or follow the link in the description below to get 60% off Incogni's annual plans and leave those data brokers empty handed. Again, that's incogni.com slash sandbox for 60% off Incogni's annual plans that can keep you and your family protected. Now, both of these AI-enabled drone wingmen are now going through ground tests and are eventually meant to fly alongside America's new stealth fighter, Boeing's F-47, as well as America's new Block 4 upgraded F-35s, all of which are meant to start flying prior to the end of this decade. Now, these drones were awarded Increment 1 contracts as a part of the Air Force's broader collaborative combat aircraft program, with these first fighter drones meant to support advanced air-to-air -air combat operations, and more designs to come that are meant to enable other mission sets, like attack or air-to-ground operations, electronic warfare, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, and a whole lot more. Now, Andoril's FQ-44, which is how it will be known once it enters service, was the first to be revealed to the public when Air Force Chief of Staff General David Elvin posted a brief video of it on Twitter back on May 1st. Now, this high-performance drone, known internally at Andoril as Fury, is said to be roughly 20 feet long with a 17-foot wingspan, powered by a single FJ-44 turbofan engine that produces roughly 4,000 pounds of thrust, enough to propel the Fury to just under Mach 1 while carrying an intended payload of two AIM-120 AMRAAM radar-guided air-to-air missiles and performing maneuvers with loads of 9Gs or more, all beneath a service ceiling of 50,000 feet. Now, the FQ-44's road to service began in the late 2010s, when it was first developed by Blue Force Technologies as a Red Air fighter drone meant to simulate the air-to-air -air capabilities of the best-performing fighters 
and adversary arsenals, jets like Russia's Su-57 and China's J-20, all to pit American fighters against it in training. Now that platform matured with this goal until 2023 when Anduril purchased Blue Force Technologies and shifted the program's focus away from emulating enemy stealth fighters and towards shooting them down instead. With a single standing vertical tail, swept trapezoidal wings, and a chin-mounted intake, the FQ-44 is roughly half the size of an F-16 and is set to make its first flight later this summer. And then we have the FQ-42 from General Atomics, which was revealed for the first time today, but has a design that's largely based on the company's existing XQ-67A, which was a low-observable drone meant to fly out ahead of crewed fighters to collect intelligence and relay it back. Now, the FQ-42 appears to share a great deal in common with that XQ-67, though this image suggests that its dorsal-mounted air intake has been made a bit less pronounced. It also looks like the FQ-42's standing vertical tails might be a bit smaller, but to tell you the truth, it's pretty hard to say for sure because of the different angles that these pictures were taken at. At a reported 28.9 feet long with a 22-foot wingspan, the XQ-67 is a fair bit bigger than Anduril's FQ-44 fighter drone, and it stands to reason that the FQ-42 that's based on it may be as well. The XQ-67A sensor drone was limited to a reported top speed of just 652 miles per hour, which is around 0.85 Mach, and a service ceiling of just shy of 45,000 feet. But its FQ-42 fighter sibling likely does best both of these metrics in service of its air-to-air -air mission focus. Likewise, the XQ-67 boasted an unrefueled range of a whopping 2,128 miles, giving it a combat radius of more than 1,000 miles. But improved performance in the FQ-42 may actually bring those figures down. In an infographic also released by General Elvin earlier this month, both the FQ-42 and FQ-44 are shown to have a combat radius of more than 700 nautical miles, which shakes out to just over 805 regular miles for those of us who aren't pirates. It also lists the top speed of each platform as classified, which may point toward the possibility of higher thrust turbofans at least being considered to give these platforms truly supersonic performance. But it is worth keeping in mind that most fighters don't actually fly at supersonic speeds very often, so a subsonic top speed may not really be that big of a deal. Like the FQ-44, General Atomic's new FQ-42 is also undergoing ground testing as we speak, ahead of its first flight later this summer. Now, these are the two fighter drones the U.S. Air Force has decided to put into production as a part of the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program's Increment 1, with the focus placed squarely on the air superiority mission, in part because it just represents some of the most complex flying these AI pilots controlling these drones would be tasked with, making it a good mission set for maturing the systems required for manned-unmanned teaming, but also for the training necessary to leverage these drones in the fight. But it's also important to highlight the fact that these are not the last drone wingmen the DoD intends to field. In fact, as we speak, the Air Force is hammering out their requirements for Increment 2 contract awards, which, at least right now, look like they'll focus on fielding more attack or air-to-ground-oriented platforms, and likely at a lower overall price point. Then there are a long list of drone wingmen in development or testing as we speak, vying for the chance to jump into these AI-enabled fighter formations. Just some of these other drone wingmen waiting in the wings include Boeing's MQ-28 Ghostbad, Kratos's XQ-58 Valkyrie, Northrop Grumman's Model 437 Vanguard, and at least one still undisclosed effort out of Lockheed Martin, just to name a few. But what about the AI that'll fly these things? Well, the artificial intelligence that will pilot these aircraft scored its first virtual victories against human pilots all the way back in DARPA's Alpha Dog Fight Trials held in August of 2020. 
And by December of 2022, AI was at the stick of a very real and heavily modified Block 30 F-16D known as the X-62A Vista. And just two years later, in May of 2024, now former Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall revealed that the AI agent, as it's known, was already considered to be roughly equal in dogfighting skill to Air Force test pilots with more than a decade's worth of cockpit experience. Now, dogfighting is not the primary focus of these platforms or the AI being developed for it, but it is among the most complex air combat operations you can undertake, making it a pretty good litmus test for how mature the AI is getting. Now, in April of this year, out at Eglin Air Force Base, the Air Force began installing the necessary hardware to turn over another half-dozen combat-coded F-16s to AI control in a program dubbed Project Venom, short for Viper Experimentation and Next-Gen Operations Model. Now, these F-16s will fly increasingly complex air combat exercises with human pilots in the cockpit, allowing the AI to learn from their example as it continues to mature toward operational service. And in between these flights, these AI agents continue to run thousands of simulated sorties, compounding upon lessons learned from human operators to rapidly advance the AI's combat capability set. Now, the Air Force intends to purchase at least 1,000 drone fighters for these AI agents to pilot by the close of this decade, with initial plans to provide each new F-47 and new Block 4 F-35 with at least a pair of drone wingmen each, though recently revealed test data actually suggests that a single fighter could easily manage far more. In fact, Lockheed Martin has, according to their CEO Jim Takelet, already demonstrated the ability to coordinate eight drones from a single F-35, truly turning every fighter into a formation unto itself. But lest you think these AI-enabled drone wingmen would be limited to taking their cues only from their assigned pilots, you should know that onboard autonomy paired with a self-healing mesh network creates a general operating model that would see these AI agents take their commands from that local pilot and then completing those tasks autonomously. If they find that that local pilot's aircraft has been lost in combat, well, then they would simply start looking for the next local pilot to take their cues from, which wouldn't necessarily need to be even the same type of aircraft it was taking its cues from before, and instead could be anything from a B-21 Raider to an RQ-180 to a drone or something else. Meaning that ending the adversary's drone-fueled nightmares would never be as simple as just taking out the piloted aircraft. And with that ends this short-fused edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and now merch from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.